Hello, and welcome back to High Peak Education. I would like to perform an example calculation of a loop with many turns, that is, many coils, and a torque in a magnetic field, and we're also going to try to solve for the direction of that torque. So let's look at this problem. We have a 200 turn circular loop of radius 50.0 centimeters is vertical with the axis through the center of the loop on an east-west line. The current of 100.0 amperes flows clockwise in the loop when viewed from the east. Earth's local magnetic field is due north with a strength of 3.00 times 10 to the minus fifth Teslas. What are the direction and magnitude of the torque on the loop? Okay. Now we can certainly start by writing down our knowns, but I also think sketching a picture is going to be really important. But let's just first start with our knowns, and then we'll go to our picture soon after that. So it's a 200 turn circular loop. So that means n is equal to 200 turns, and that's unitless. So this is a unitless number. We also have the radius of 50 0.0 centimeters. We want to get that in SI units. That's 0 0.500 meters. And we know something about the orientation. We'll come back to that. We also know what the current is. So I'll do the current in red. That way we can uh, put that on the sketch. So that's exactly 100.0 amperes. That's a pretty large current. And it flows clockwise. We'll talk about that when viewed from the east. Let's see, Earth's local magnetic field, we know its strength. So let's put that in blue. So the magnetic field um, magnitude of Earth here is 3.00 times 10 to the minus 5 Teslas. So that's going to be... 0 0.3 gauss so that's a small value but still reasonable for earth and we want the direction and the magnitude of the torque vector that results so of the torque vector that results so we want this as a vector so this is size and direction that's why we wrote vector symbol okay so let's start off with a sketch. Now, by the way, as part of this sketch, I think getting axes is going to be really key. So let me try to do my best to draw some three-dimensional axes that are similar to GIS or uh, geophysical coordinates. That is, the positive x direction is to the east. The positive y direction is to the north, but what that means based upon right-hand rule and positive right-hand corkscrew axes is that the positive z direction should be up, okay, now, or vertically up. Now, with those axes in mind, let's look at the geometry here. Now, first of all, it's a circular loop, so I didn't write this down, but when we sketch this loop, it'll look circular. So since we know that this loop is a circular loop, we probably need to get the area, and I think the area will be like pi r squared. So we'll come back to that. But let's see, it's a circular loop, and it's vertical, with its axis through the center of the loop along an east-west line. So I think what's really going on is the loop is kind of like this, okay? In other words, sort of the center of the loop is facing to the east. And also, we know that the center of the loop is facing east, so it's vertical. And if you were to look, say, in the yz plane, so let's sketch the yz plane here for a second. There's positive z there's positive y. I think that the circle, I think that the loop is centered on the center of the yz plane, something like so. But again, we're sort of viewing it from the east. Now, as I think we view it from the east, 
we're told the current is clockwise as viewed from the east. So I think that that would look like this. Okay. So in the YZ plane, it would also look like this. And remember, this is the electric current I in that red color. Okay. And we also know the direction of Earth's magnetic field, so let's do that in blue, which is the color I already selected for Earth's magnetic field. So that should be in this direction, in the northward direction, and in this YZ plane, it should be exactly parallel to this Y axis. So that's B, the Earth's magnetic field direction. Let's see, we want to know the direction, the magnitude of the torque on the loop. Now let's talk about the direction here for a second. I think that if we consider this loop's magnetic dipole moment, that is the north pole of its own little bar magnet it produces, I think this loop, since it's rotating clockwise by right hand rule 2, the magnetic dipole moment should be towards the west. So it should be that way if you sketch it three dimensionally. So this is mu vector magnetic dipole moment. And in the yz plane, it would be towards the west. So that would be the negative x direction. So I think that would be into the page here. So I think that would be like so and that's going to be mu vector. Hopefully you see that. Okay, so I've tried to draw this in a couple of ways that you can see the geometry. Now, <clears throat> when that magnetic dipole moment faces west, it should reorient itself so that it is parallel to the external magnetic field. That is the magnetic field of Earth. So I think that we'd expect this mu should rotate this way that is, it should reorient, and if there was an axis um, here, so an axis here along this z-axis, I think the torque is going to be somewhat like so. So I think if you think about what that looks like, that should be, um, it's probably going to be clockwise when uh, viewed from above. So clockwise when viewed from above. So this is going to be sort of the torque because the magnetic dipole moment should align itself with the external magnetic field. Okay. So let's see if we can prove that with um, uh, some directions of current here in magnetic field. Now hopefully you see that the current on the top and the bottom of this loop is parallel and anti-parallel to the magnetic field. So right here and right here we say um, the torque is equal to zero and the torque is equal to zero. But on this side and this side we do, certainly do have some torque. So if I is upward and then if B is yeah, if I is upward in the Z direction, and then B is northward in the Y direction, then I think the magnetic force right here would be into the page. So let's go ahead and mark that. The magnetic force would be into the page right here. F sub B inward. But then that means since the current is down, and then the B is northward, then the magnetic force would be out of the page over here. So F sub B would be out of the page on this side of the loop. But that makes perfect sense because we should, again, rotate the loop um, in the direction we were just saying, clockwise when viewed from above. So I think this is half of our answer. The, tor the loop should rotate clockwise when viewed from above. Okay. So in other words, this part of the loop moves further towards the south, and then this part of the loop moves further towards the north. Okay, that's the best way I can explain it. I did my best on the geometry. Now let's calculate the magnitude. So I think the magnitude of this torque 
So I'm just running magnitude is N I A B sine phi. So N I A B sine phi. That's the number of loops, the electric current, the area vector, or sorry, not the area vector, the area of the loop, the strength of the magnetic field, and the angle between the two vectors, namely B and the um, area vector. Now the area vector, by the way, points towards the west, and then the B field points towards the north. So I think, first of all, that phi is equal to 90 degrees. It's exactly perpendicular. So sine of 90 degrees we know to be 1. And then remember, A here is going to be pi r squared. So I think we can put all the numbers in for tau. So tau should be n. So n was 200 times the electric current. That was 100 amperes. So that's this number. I could write it in red, but hopefully you get the idea. 100 amperes. A is pi r squared. So that's pi times r was 0 0.500 meters. And we have to square that. And then we need B, which is the strength of the magnetic field, which is 3.00. Again, I could write this in blue, but 3.00 times 10 to the minus 5 teslas. And again, sine of 90 degrees, we just have 1, so we'll just leave that off. So let's get this tau. Okay. And let's go to the calculator. So we'll go on and we'll clear. So this is a long multiplication problem. We'll just do 200 times 100. We don't need the point zero because the calculator doesn't care about significant digits times second pi times 0.5 squared times 3 times 10 to the minus 5 power. Whoops, hang on, something is wrong. Second, EE e minus 5 power. Okay, I hope that looks correct. So let's write this down. It's about 0.471 to three significant digits. Approximately 0.471 Newton meters. So that should be the magnitude. Okay, so this is our magnitude of our torque. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please smash that like button if you enjoy this content. Please share this with your social network and please subscribe to the channel to grow the channel. Please feel free to comment also on the video. I hope you enjoy this content. Thank you for watching High Peak Education. I will see you in the next video.